knew her. They knew them, and they knew about the money in the apartment. <clears throat> you will hear evidence, as I said, about the missing video, and, and you know, we talked about lack of evidence. What else will you hear that just doesn't sit right? Well, the police seized a lot of physical evidence from the apartment, evidence that in a case like this, you would think they might want to analyze, they might want to examine, such as the computer, the hard drive, or Marta's cell phone. But that wasn't done. You heard Ms. Adams talk about the fact that Miguel, when questioned, was asked, for example, to give a sample of DNA. He could refuse, but he had no reason to, and he willingly agreed. He willingly agreed to a lot of things which you will, which you will hear about. For example, even when told he didn't have to, he agreed to speak to the police. Even when told he didn't have to, he consented to a search of the apartment and his room. He consented to the photographs being taken that you saw, and he consented to a search of his car. And you will hear in the statement, he described his car, and he told the police where the car was located. What you will not hear, what you will not hear, is that while they went into the apartment to look for evidence, they never looked at his car. The car that he, according to them, drove away from the murder scene. The car that presumably, if they had looked, and if they were right, would have traces of blood or other evidence. They never looked. And he consented to it. He said, look at my car. This is the red car. This is couldn't be. you conclude that, as I submit you should, you will have to find him not guilty. Thank you. Thank you. State your first witness. Your Honor, the state calls Stephanie Rivera.
take ten minutes. I'm going to ask you to please leave your notepads at your seats. If you the name's going to take you outside. Actually, please do not do not discuss this case with each other. All right? Don't do any research. Try to gather information. That is not part of this. I'll be back in under ten minutes. Okay, I'll be ten minutes. All rise. Follow me.
Do you have enough space for one more plate thing? Sure. Well, you can, um, I can I like fry the whole corn into mine. Um, okay. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. Okay. Stephanie Rivera. Thank you. 
Right here. Please raise your right hand. I swear from the testimony about to give will be the truth, whole truth, nothing but truth. Superviso las áreas públicas en un edificio de 12 pisos. I supervise the public areas in a 12-story building. In Fisher Island. Fisher Island. In Fisher Island. Okay, and how long have you been doing that kind of work? ¿Hace cuánto tiempo que trabajas en eso? Un año y dos meses. A year and two months. Okay. By the way, can everyone hear the witness okay? And the interpreter. Okay. Mr. Barron, where were you born? Señora Rivera, ¿estoy dónde nació? Honduras. Honduras. How old were you when you came to the United States? Cuando estuve en Estados Unidos, ¿qué edad tenía? 14. 14. When you came to the United States, did you move directly to Miami? Cuando usted se mudó a Estados Unidos, vino directamente a Miami. Sí. Yes. Did any of your family members move to Miami with you? ¿Algunos de sus familiares se mudó a Miami con usted? Perdón. ¿Algunos de sus familiares se mudó a Miami con usted? Sí. Yes. Okay. Who moved with you? Who came to the United States with you? ¿Quién vino de Estados Unidos? ¿Quién se mudó con usted? ¿Quién vino? Eh, mis hermanas solamente. Only my sisters. Your sisters. Okay. Mis hermanas. Um, 
When you moved here, did you move in with your mother? When you moved here, did you move in with your mother? Yes. Was she already in the United States when you first came? For that entonces, when you came, the first time she was in the United States. My mother, yes. My mother, yes. And what is your mother's name? How does she call her? Amaury Dinora Guzman. Amaury Dinora Guzman. And who, what is your father? Who is your father? Who is your father? Jose Ramon Rivera. Jose Ramon Rivera. Okay. Where does he live? Where does he live? Madrid, Spain. Madrid, Spain. Do you have any brothers and sisters? Do you have any brothers and sisters? Yes. Yes. How many brothers and sisters do you have? How many brothers and sisters do you have? Three sisters. Perdón. Two sisters. Conmigo son, somos tres y un hermano varón que sea eh, el más pequeño. Three sisters actually three with me and the younger brother is the youngest. So let's talk about your two sisters. You have two sisters who are around the same age as you are. Hablemos de right? dos hermanas. O sea, tiene dos hermanas que son como la misma edad tuya más o menos. ¿Es así? Sí. Yes. And those are the two sisters that moved with you to the United States. Y son las dos hermanas que se mudaron con ustedes de Estados Unidos. Sí. Yes. What are their names? ¿Cómo se llaman? Ana Patricia Rivera y Marjorie Nicole Rivera. Ana Patricia Rivera and Marjorie Nicole Rivera. Okay. And your brother, what is his name? ¿Y cómo se llama su hermano? Harold. Harold Ruiz. Harold Ruiz. Is he older or younger than you? Él es más joven o mayor que usted. Él es más joven. He's younger. Does he live with your mother right now? ¿El vive con su madre ahora mismo? Sí. Yes. <coughs> now the victim in this case is one of your sisters, is that right? La víctima en este caso es una de sus hermanas, ¿correcto? Sí. Yes. I want to talk to you a little bit about your sister, Martha. Quiero hablar un poquitico con usted acerca de su hermana, Martha. Okay. Okay. What was her full name? ¿Cuál era el nombre completo de ella? Marta Dinora Guzmán Alvarenga. Marta Dinora Guzmán Alvarenga. Did she sometimes go by Dinora? Okay, a veces le llaman a ella de Nora. No, solo Marta. No, just Marta. Marta? You called her Marta. Le decía, Marta. Teníamos un nombre que le decíamos Chayne. Uh, we would call her by this nickname or a, a term of their name. We would call her, the children to confirm, Chayne? Sí. Chayne. Okay. Um, who is her father? ¿Quién era el padre de ella? Eh, Jorge Guzmán. Jorge Guzmán. Now, is he also your father? ¿Él es también su padre? No. No. Is Marta older or younger? Marta es mayor o menor que usted. Menor. Younger. And was she born in the United States or was she born in Honduras? Ella había nacido en Estados Unidos o en Honduras. Aquí en Estados Unidos. Here in the United States. When you first came to the United States, did you live with Marta, your mother, and Marta's father? Cuando usted vino aquí a Estados Unidos, usted vivía con la mamá de Marta y el papá de Marta. Sí. Yes. Um, and your sisters as well, your, your, your old, the ones that are around your same age? Y también con las hermanas mayores, o sea, las que son de mi edad suya. Sí. Yes. At some point, did your mother and Marta's father separate? En algún momento, su madre y el papá de Marta se separaron? Sí. Yes. And after your mom and Marta's father separated, did you and your other sisters help your mom take care of Marta? Y en algún momento después de que se separó su mamá y el papá de Marta y tres hermanos, sus hermanas ayudaron a help for the interpreter. Help. Help? Yeah. No, no, no. What was it? The, the, the latter part of the question comes from. Oh, um, did you and your other sisters help your mother take care of Marta? Got it. Thank you. Entre usted y sus otras hermanas ayudaron a cuidar de Marta. Sí. Yes. You were quite a bit older than she was. Usted era bastante mayor de lo que era ella. Sí. Yes. Was there a point when you moved out of your mother's apartment? ¿Hubo algún momento en que usted se mudó del apartamento de su madre? Sí, cuando quedé embarazada de mi primer hijo. Sí, cuando estaba embarazada de mi primer hijo. ¿Hubo algún momento en que usted se mudó del apartamento de su madre? Sí, cuando quedé embarazada de mi primer hijo. ¿Hubo algún momento en que usted se mudó del apartamento de su madre? Sí, cuando quedé embarazada de mi primer hijo. ¿Hubo algún momento en que usted se mudó del apartamento de su madre? Sí, cuando quedé embarazada de mi primer hijo. ¿Hubo algún momento en que usted se mudó del apartamento de su madre? Sí, cuando quedé embarazada de mi primer hijo. ¿Hubo algún momento en que usted se mudó del apartamento de su madre? Sí, cuando quedé embarazada de mi primer hijo. ¿Hubo algún momento en que usted se mudó del apartamento de su madre? Sí, cuando quedé embarazada de mi primer hijo. ¿Hubo algún momento en que usted se mudó del apartamento de su madre? Sí, cuando quedé embarazada de mi primer hijo. ¿Hubo algún momento en que usted se mudó del apartamento de su madre? Sí, cuando quedé embarazada de mi primer hijo. ¿Hubo algún momento en que usted se mudó del apartamento would you still go over and visit your mother and Martha? Después de que usted se mudó, usted todavía iba a visitar a su mamá y a Martha? Sí. Yes. Describe your relationship with Martha. Describa su relación con Martha. Eh, era una niña muy alegre. Le gustaba jugar mucho. She was a very happy girl. She would like to play a lot. Eh, no gustaba escuchar música en el televisor. 
who like to play music on their on the TV? Eh, en la computadora, eh, cosas de niñas, bailar, reírnos. On the computer, uh, I mean girl things, I mean dancing, just laughing. Did you help take care of her like a mother? ¿Usted ayudó a cuidarla como una madre? Sí, por decirlo así, sí. Yes, you could say that, yes. Now, do you know a person named Miguel Luis Lobo? ¿Usted conoce una persona o el nombre de Miguel Luis Lobo? Sí. Yes. How do you know him? ¿Cómo lo conoce? Él era mi padrastro. He was my stepfather. Um, is he Harold's father? Él es el, papá, el padre de Harold. Sí. Yes. Do you see Miguel Luis Lobo here in the courtroom today? Te ve hoy a Miguel Luis Lobo en el courtroom. We'll stipulate with this way to find my client. Now, did Miguel Ruiz Lobo, did the defendant, have a relationship with your mother? El acusado Miguel Ruiz Lobo tenía una relación con con su madre. Sí. Yes. Did he live with your mother? Él vivía con su madre. Sí. Yes. When he first moved in, were you living in the apartment? Cuando se mudó por primera vez, usted vivía en el apartamento. Sí. Yes. Um, and who else was living there when he first moved in? Cuando se ahí, eh, ¿quién más vivía ahí? Eh, solo éramos nosotras eh, de niñas y mi padrastro y mi mamá. It was just us girls, uh, my stepfather and my mother. Um, where was your mother living at the time? Para ese entonces, ¿dónde vivía su mamá? En la 834 de Norwest y la 4 calle. On 834th of, uh, on Northwest 834 and 4th Street. Was that the same place your mother was living when Marta died? Yes. Do you know where Marta's mother was living at the time? Do you know where Marta's mother was living at the time? Yes. Showing the witness that has been marked for identification as state 6R and 6F. Yes. May I approach? <coughs> no. Um, is it there? I'm look at these. First, I'm showing you 6S. Do you see the area where your mother lives? The area where your mother lives? Si, aquí. Yes, right here. Your Honor, I ask that 6S be admitted. No objection. Without objection. 6S marked for ID becomes states one and other. Ms. Rivera, I know you just pointed it out for me. But would you show the jury? Where your mother's home was located. Donde estaría ubicada la casa de su mamá? Aquí. Right here. Where this little dot is? Donde está este pequeño punto? Sí. Yes. Go back a little closer at states 6R. Do you recognize this? Aquí. Right here. What is that? El apartamento. I'm sorry, she had hard to keep your voice on. Por favor, hable fuerte. El apartamento. The apartment. Your mother's apartment. This yes. Your Honor, I ask that 6R be admitted. Any objection? No objection. No objection. Stage 6 R marked by D becomes stage 2 in evidence.
permission to publish. Um, Ms. Rivera, just now the jury can see this, go ahead and show them which, which one of these is your mother's partner. The one with the red roof in the middle? Si. Yes. Describe that apartment for us. Era de tres cuartos. It was three rooms. Y dos baños. And two bathrooms. Sala y cocina. Living room and kitchen. been marked for identification as states 2K and states 2R. Ms. Rivera, I'm showing you states 2K and states 2R. Do you recognize what's in these photos? Reconoce lo que aparece en estas dos fotos. Sí. Yes. What is it? Yes. El apartamento. The apartment. What part of the apartment? ¿Qué parte del apartamento? En la parte del frente del apartamento. The front of the apartment. Is it fair and an accurate depiction of the front? Es, es un muestra con exactitud de lo que es? Sí. Yes. Do you want the 2R and 2K be admitted? No objection. Two K and two R mark for ID from stage three and four. So you said this is the outside of the apartment. Yes. Yes. Was it a permanent floor apartment? Era un apartamento en el primer piso. Sí. Yes. You said it had how many bedrooms? Usted dijo que tenía cuántos cuartos, habitaciones? Tres habitaciones y dos baños. Three bedrooms, two bathrooms. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, Ms. Rivera, I'm showing you what has been admitted as stage five. Um, do you recognize this? Reconoce esto. Sí, es adentro del apartamento. Yes, that's the inside of the apartment. Okay. Um, it's a it's a sketch. Right? Es un, es un diagrama, verdad? Es un plan. Plan. Of course. Okay. Tell us, where would you enter the apartment?
Hold on. From here? Cuando uno entraba, ¿cuál era la primera habitación o recinto que entraba donde llegaba? A la sala. Sí, en el living room. Um, was the kitchen near the living room? ¿La cocina quedaba cerca de la sala? Sí. Yes. One U, one B, two G, and two Z mark for ID to come state six through nine. states 10 through 12. <coughs> 5C and 5D marks ID become states 13 and 14. Rivera, you said that when you first walked in, you walked into what area? Sí. On this diagram, 
is that marked with the word living room? Y en este diagrama es el que aparece como sala o como diría en inglés living room, es el que aparece ahí marcado. Sí, la sala, sí. Yes, that's the living room, yes. Okay, and then the kitchen was right there, is that right? Y en la cocina quedaba ahí al lado, ahí cerquita, ¿verdad? Sí. Yes. That's the living room. Mission to publish on. show you now what has been admitted as states 8. What area of the apartment is this? The kitchen. Yes. Showing you again what has been admitted at six five. <laughs> so looking at this, it looks like if you go down the hall a little bit, there's a bedroom, this bedroom here. Whose bedroom was that? Marta. Marta. showing you what has been marked for identification, I mean what marked has been admitted, sorry, as states 7 and states 9. Are these photos of that bedroom? Yes. 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 Continuing on this sketch, it looks like there's a bedroom further down the hallway. Which room? Who, who was in that room? Quién estaba en ese cuarto? Nadie. No one. Estaba vacío y solamente jugábamos y bailábamos en ese cuarto. It was empty. We only used it to play and dance. Now, 
What has been admitted? As states 13 and 14. Are these photos of that bedroom how they looked when marked in? Sí, el cuarto vacío. Yes, the empty room. And how would that room be used? ¿Y cómo, de qué manera usaban ese cuarto? ¿Para qué lo utilizaban? Para jugar videojuegos y para bailar. To play video games and to dance. Showing you now states 12 and state 6. Do you, um, what is that the master bedroom? I know you said that your mom, your mother, and, and, and Harold used to sleep in that room. Did Marta also sometimes sleep in that room? Do you know? Usted me dijo que su mamá y Harold vivían, dormían en ese cuarto, pero su hermana Marta también a veces dormía en ese cuarto. Sí. Yes. Now you said you moved out when you were about 16. Usted dijo que usted se mudó, o salió cuando tenía como 16. Sí. Yes. Did your adult sisters also move out at some point? Sus hermanas adultas en algún momento se mudaron también. Sí. Yes. Did they live, stay locally or did they leave? Se They left the youngest one, the third one, Nicole. Se mudó lejos. She went far away. Okay. She moved far away. Did she come back? Ella regresó. No, solo igual que yo a visitar. No, just like me to visit. Okay. When you say far away, not far away. Cuando lejos, qué tan eh, en el northwest. Well, uh, in the northwest. Pero no sé exactamente la dirección. But I don't know the exact address. Okay. Um, did she stay in Miami? Ella se quedó en Miami. Eh, sí. Well, yes. Okay. So they were both in Miami, so. O sea, ambas igual siguen en Miami, entonces. Patty estaba en el Navy. Patty was in the Navy. Patricia was in the Navy. Patricia was in the Navy. Sí. Yes. But Nicole was in Miami. Pero Nicole estaba en Miami. Sí. Yes. Growing up, what kind of work did your mom do? Cuando estaba creciendo, ¿qué tipo de trabajo hacía su mamá? En Fisher Island. En Fisher Island. What did she do in Fisher Island? Ella qué hacía en Fisher Island? Limpiando áreas públicas. Cleaning public areas. Okay. Um, did she do anything to make extra money? Ella hacía algo para ganar dinero extra. Sí. Yes. What did she do to make some extra money? ¿Qué hacía para ganar dinero extra? Vendía números de lotería. She would sell... Um, Lottery numbers. And what kind of lottery numbers? ¿Qué tipo de números de lotería? Eh, muchos. Many. Okay. Um, was it from a certain area, though? Where was the lottery from? Was it the United States lottery or somewhere else? ¿De qué área? ¿Era lotería de Estados Unidos o de otra parte? De Honduras. From Honduras. What, what is it called? What is that type of lottery ¿Cómo called? ¿Cómo se llama? ¿Ese tipo de lotería cómo se llama? La Chica. La Chica. 
So tell us, um, how did she sell these tickets? Díganos cómo era que ella vendía esos, esos, esas boletas. Ella usaba un cuaderno en lo que tenía apuntado todos los números de lotería. She used this notebook where she had written down all the lottery numbers. Y entonces la gente decía qué número quería comprar y cuántos pedacitos quería comprar de ese número de lotería. So people would tell her how many numbers she wanted to buy of that number of the, uh, the, of the lottery and then she would uh, issue the uh, interpreter to confirm y ella le, le daba como... Eh, si querían 20 dólares, 30 dólares de ese número. So if, whether they wanted like say 30 dólares or 20 dólares of that number. O más. Or maybe more. Okay. Was there a specific place that she would go to sell these lottery tickets? Había un lugar en particular que que ella iba para vender esas etiquetas de lotería. Sí. Yes. Where would she go to sell the tickets? Ella donde iba a vender los tickets. A lo lancho. A lo lancho. The interpreter is not understanding that. Thank you. La cafetería se llamaba El Olancho. Is a cafeteria called El Olancho? Um, what kind of cafeteria is it? What kind of food? ¿Qué tipo de cafetería era? ¿Qué tipo de comida vendía? Por el día era cafetería y por la noche era bar. Um, it was a cafeteria during the day and night it turned into a bar. Is it Honduran? Is it is Honduran? <coughs> no, aquí. No, up here. I know it's from here, but is it Honduran food? Sí. Yo sé que es de Perú, ¿se hace como comida hondureña? Sí. Yes. Um, what day were the lottery numbers called? ¿Qué número era que se llamaban o que se hacía el sorteo de números de lotería en qué días? Los domingos. On Sundays. So what days would your mom go and sell the tickets? Entonces, ¿qué día iba su mamá a vender los tiquetes? Sábado y domingo. Saturday and Sundays. How much money would your mom make selling those tickets? ¿Cuánto dinero ganaba su mamá vendiendo esos tiquetes? A veces tres mil, a veces no ganaba. Era dependiendo si ganaba o no ganaba. No siempre ganaba. Sometimes three thousand, sometimes no sabe si would make anything. It depends on whether she would sell or not. Sometimes she would make any money, sometimes she would. Now, did the defendant know that she was selling these tickets and making this sort of money? El acusado eh, sabía que ella vendía esos boletos y que ella hacía esa, esa clase de dinero. Sí. Yes. And where would she keep the money? Ella dónde guardaba el dinero? En diferentes lugares. Different places. Would she hide it? Ella lo escondía. Sí. Yes. Did you ever go and help your mom sell tickets? ¿Usted alguna vez fue a ayudar a su mamá a los boletos o los tickets? Sí. Yes. And how did your mom get into this business of selling lottery tickets? ¿Cómo su mamá se involucró en este negocio de vender los tickets o boletos de lotería? Mi abuela Rosario. From my grandma Rosario. Is that your mom, mom's mom? Is this the mama as mama? Sí. Yes. So she also sold tickets. O sea, que ella también vendía tickets. Sí. Si. Yes. <coughs> Would the defendant also go to El Olancho regularly? Eh, la acusada también iba a la, El Olancho con frecuencia. Sí. Si. Yes. What would he do? El que hacía allá. Tomar. Drink. Now, describe your relationship with the defendant. Describa su relación con el acusado. Eh, antes de lo misi, antes de la separación de mi mamá. Well, before the homicide, I mean before my mom's separation. Eh, todo era tranquilo con él. You're so quiet with him. Yo me llevaba muy bien con él. Lo quería como un papá. I'll get along with, uh, well with him. I loved him like a dad. A pesar de sus defectos de, con la bebida. Despite his uh, issue with the drink, with the drinking. Oh, despite his, despite his uh, drinking issue. Okay. Um, when you first met the defendant, did he drink a lot? Cuando usted conoció al acusado por primera vez, bebía, bebía bastante. Sí. Yes. What about your mom? Did she drink a lot? Y su mamá, ella bebía, bebía bastante. Sí. Yes. And over time, did the defendant's drinking get worse? Y con el tiempo, el uh, problema de bebida del acusado se empeoró. Con la separación de mi mamá empeoró. With my mom's separation, it got worse. In the year, year leading up to your, to Mar I'm sorry, in the year leading up to Martin's death, did the defendant continue to drink a lot? En el año que conducía o hacia la muerte de Marta, el acusado seguía bebiendo, bebía bastante. Repitamos la pregunta. Can you repeat the question again? Were you, did the defendant continue to drink a lot in the year leading up to your sister's death? 
en el año, eh, acercándose hacia la muerte de su hermana, el acusado bebía bastante, seguía bebiendo. Sí. Yes. Were there times where he would leave and drink for an entire weekend? Había momentos en que él se iba a, a, a beber por todo un fin de semana. Sí. Yes. Were you and your sisters concerned about his drinking? A ustedes, hermana, le inquietaba, le preocupaba el problema de la bebida de él, la, la situación con la bebida. Sí. Yes. And did you encourage your mom to tell him to move out of the apartment? Fue interpreter. Did you encourage your mom to? Did you encourage your mom to tell him to move out of the apartment? Usted eh, motivó a su mamá para que le dijera que se fuera del apartamento. No. No. You you didn't talk to your mom about. Usted no habló con su mamá acerca de que él se fuera, se mudara. No. No. Okay. At some point he did move out. En algún momento se hizo, lo hizo. En algún momento se mudó. Él se mudó, sí. He moved out, yes. Cuando se separó de mi mamá. When he separated from my mom. When he separated from your mom. Cuando se separó de su mamá. Sí. Yes. And was part of that because you were concerned about the drinking? Parte de eso fue porque usted estaba inquietada o inquieta acerca de la bebida de él. No. No. Um, no. At some point, were you made aware that your sister had been cutting herself? En algún momento, usted se enteró de que su hermana se había cortado a sí misma. Mi hermana no se cortó, por decirlo así. My sister uh, didn't cut herself, so to speak. What would you say it was? ¿Qué diría usted que fue lo que pasó? A reuniones. Mi hermana era se mareaba con ver sangre. Scratches. My sister she get dizzy um, by watching uh, by looking at blood. Porque ella sufría de sangrado de nariz y cuando miraba sangre se desmayaba. Because she would suffer from nose bleeding, so every time she looked at blood, she would pass out. So when we say that she was cutting herself, was she inflicting some sort of injury to her arms? Entonces cuando usted se hablamos de que se estaba cortando, ella estaba um, haciendo algún tipo de daño a ella misma a sus brazos. Sí, pero era aruñoncita porque Marta era muy delicada con ver sangre. Yes, but it was just a minor scratches because Marta was very uh, sensitive to watching or to seeing blood. So they were very deep cuts. O sea que no eran cortadas profundas. No. No. Did you actually see the cuts? Usted de hecho llegó a ver las cortadas. Las cortadas? Sí. Yes. Okay. And you said she she didn't like the cut of blood. Y usted dijo que a ella no le gustaba ver sangre. No le gustaba la sangre, se mareaba. She didn't like to see blood, she would get dizzy. Okay. Um, she would get dizzy? ¿Ella se mareaba? Sí. Yes. So let's talk now a little bit about the time right before your sister passed, in June of 2014. Hablemos un poquitico antes de que su hermana falleció en 2014. Fue en Chocorro, June 2014. June of 2014. En junio de 2014. Um, where were you living in June of 2014? ¿Dónde vivió usted en junio de 2014? En la 1727 del Sabo y la 10 calle. 17, interpreters come from the address, ¿me lo repito? 1727, Southwest, Southwest, la 10 calle. And 10th Street. Were you living with your husband's family? ¿Usted vivía con la familia de su esposo? Sí. Yes. As far as the apartment that we talked about, who was living in that apartment? En cuanto al apartamento del que hablamos, ¿quién vivía en ese apartamento? Eh, mi suegra, mi esposo, yo y mis dos hijos todavía no habían my, nacido el tercero. My mother-in-law, my husband, me and my two children, uh, the third had hadn't been born yet. Okay, so this is, this is in your apartment. O sea, ese es en su apartamento. En ese apartamento, sí. In that apartment, yes. In your mother's apartment. Who was living in your mother's apartment? Ahora, en el apartamento de su mamá, ¿quién vivía en el apartamento de su mamá? Marta, Harold y ella. Marta, Harold and her. Okay. Um, was the, the defendant was not living there at that point. Para ese entonces el acusado no vivía ahí, ahí en ese lugar. No. No. Your mom had told him to leave. Su mamá le había dicho que se fuera. Is that right? Es así. Sí. Yes. How old was Marta? ¿Qué edad tenía Marta? In June of 2014. En junio de 2014. Once. Eleven. One has Mark Friday becomes stage 15.
May I approach? Yes. Let the record reflect that I'm showing the witness what has been admitted now is page 15. Who's in this photo? My sister. What's her name? How does she call it? Marta Dinora Guzman. Marta Dinora Guzman. Your brother was also living there, you said? Yes. And he was little at the time, is that right? Yes. 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 I'm showing the witness who is going to admit in state 16. Do you recognize who's in this photo? Yes, my brother Harold. Your older sisters, the sisters that are about your age. Hola, sus hermanas, que son las que tienen más o menos la edad suya. Sí. Yes. Where were they living at the time? Para ese Patty estaba en Navy. Patty was in the Navy. Y Nicole ya se había mudado. Nicole had already moved out. Okay. Um, did Nicole have a family? Nicole tenía familia. Sí. Yes. Who was she married to? Con quién se había casado o con quién estaba casada? Agustín Telles. Agustín Telles. Eh, vivía con el suegro. Lived with um, her uh, father-in-law. Y tenía un hijo con Agustín Telles. She had a child. She had a child with Agustín Telles. No, disculpe. No, I'm sorry. Todavía no había nacido el bebé. Estaba embarazada. The baby hadn't been born yet. She was pregnant. <coughs> you want to ask for eight minutes? Yes. Four A Mark for ID becomes state seventeen. Now you said your sister Marjorie was married to Augustin Tellez. Usted dijo que su hermana Marjorie estaba casada con Augustin Tellez. No sé si casada, pero si estaban juntos. I don't know if she was married, but they were together. Okay. What is does Marjorie go by any other names? A Mar a Marjorie la conocen bajo algún otro nombre? Nicole. Nicole. Nicole? Nicole. Is that her middle name? Is this the second name? Yes. Yes. Your Honor, may I approach? Yes. Let the record reflect I'm showing the witness who has been admitted is State 17. Is this Mr. Augustin Tolles? Is this Mr. Augustin Tolles? Yes. Yes. You said you were living separately sí, from your mom and your sister. Sí. Yes. After the defendant moved out and before your sister's death, Después de que su madre se mudó, y antes de que su madre se mudó, did you have any other family members living with you? Did you have any other family members living with you? Did you have any other family members living with you? Did you have any other family members living with you? Did you have any other family members living with you? Did you have any other family members living with you? Did you have any other family members living with you? Did you have any other family members living with you? Did you have any other family members living with you? Did you have any other family members living with you? Did you have any other family members living with you? Did you have any other family members living with you? Did you have any other family members living with you? Did you have any other family members living with you? Did you have any other family members living with you
Perdón, repita una pregunta. I'm sorry, can you repeat the question again? After the defendant moved out. Después de que se haya mudado el acusado. And before your sister's death. Pero antes de la hermana de la muerte de su hermana. Did the defendant show up at your house? El acusado se apareció alguna vez a su casa. Mm -hmm. Sí. Yes. Was he drunk? Estaba borracho. Sí. Yes. What did he want? ¿Qué quería? Eh, llegó tomado con mi hermano Harold. He came drunk. Entonces, ¿cómo se confirma? Perdón, llegó tomado. Sí. Sí, él llegó tomado a la casa con mi hermano Harold. He came drunk at the house with my brother Harold. Okay. Um, did you give him food? ¿Usted le dio de comer? Sí. Yes. And when you gave him food, did, did you talk to him? Cuando usted le dio de comer, ¿usted habló con él? Sí. Yes. Did he talk to you about Martha? ¿Él le habló a usted acerca de Marta? Sí. Yes. What did he say about Marta? ¿Qué le dijo él a usted acerca de Marta? Que no, no le agradaba. That uh, he didn't like her. Y que hablara con mi mamá para volver con él. And to talk to my mom so he could go back with her. Strike that. To talk to my mom so that she could go back with him. Okay. Um, did he say why he didn't like Marta? Él dijo por qué uh, él no le caía bien Marta o no le agradaba Marta. <coughs> Eh, no, solo sé que mi hermana tenía su carácter fuerte, pero era una niña. Well, all I know is that my sister had a strong character, but I mean, she was a girl. Okay. Um, did he blame Marta for he not being with her, your mom? Yeah, she called Marta. Just Jane. Just Jane. <laughs> did he say anything about Marta causing him not to be with your mom? ¿Qué más dijo él acerca de Marta? Solo eso, nada más. Just that, that's it. So he said he, he, uh, he didn't like Marta. O sea, él dijo que a él no le agradaba a Marta. Por decir sí, sí. You could say that, yes. And what did he want you to talk to your mom about? Did he want to talk to your mom about it? Did he want to talk to your mom about it? Did he want to talk to your mom about it? Did he want to talk to me so that uh, he could uh, get back, with, uh, back together with my mom? So let's now go to the day of Martin's death, June 22nd, 2020. Ahora hablemos del día de la muerte de Marta, el 2 de junio de 2014. ¿Qué planes tenía usted para ese día? Fuimos a vender un euro de lotería con mi mamá. We went to sell some lottery tickets with my mom. Y... It was a weekend? ¿Era un fin de semana? Sí. Yes. Do you remember what day of the weekend was? ¿Cuarta que día de la semana? Domingo. Sunday. What do you remember, if anything, about the morning before you left your house? ¿Qué recuerdo usted si algo recuerda de la mañana antes de que usted saliera de la casa? Solo recuerdo que me desperté, eh, eh, mi mamá me llamó. I just, I just remember that I woke up, my mom called me. Me puse diferente ropa porque no me sentía cómoda. I put on a different set of clothes because I didn't feel comfortable. Y eh, me dijo, mi mamá estaba en el parqueo esperándome y me dijo que me apurara que teníamos que ir a vender los números de lotería. La interpretación se confirma. ¿Quién le dijo que le esperaba el parqueo? Mi mamá. Con el carro para recogerme ella rápido para ir a vender los números rápido. Ve, ir a dejar a Jaro y vender los números de lotería. My mom told me to hurry up. She was waiting in the car in the parking lot. Uh, we were supposed to go drop off uh, Harold and then go sell the, the lottery the tickets. Did your mom come and pick you up that morning? ¿Su mamá vino a recogerla esa mañana? Sí. Yes. <coughs> What time do you know did she pick you up? ¿A qué hora si usted, si usted sabe, a qué hora si ya la vino a recoger? Eran siete, exactamente, no sé la hora, pero si era bien de mañana. It was seven, well, I don't know the exact time, but I know it was uh, pretty early. Okay. Was anyone with her when she came to pick you up? Cuando usted vino a recogerla, ¿había alguien con ella? Eh, no. No. And when she picked you up, where did you go from your house? Cuando ella la recogió, ¿a dónde fue? ¿Dónde su casa? A la casa de ella. 
a arreglar a Harold para llevarlo donde Nicole. To her house to get Harold ready to take him over to Nicole's. So you went back to her apartment. O sea que usted regresó al apartamento. Fue, fue el apartamento de ella. Sí. Yes. Who was at your mother's apartment? ¿Quién estaba en el apartamento de su mamá? Marta estaba acostada en la cama de ella durmiendo y viendo televisión. Marta was laying on her bed uh, watching TV. Where was she? What room was she in? ¿En qué cuarto estaba ella? En el de mi mamá. In my mom's. What time did you leave the house? ¿A qué hora usted salió de la casa? No lo sé. I don't know. Okay. Uh, when you went to leave, did you go and see Marta? Cuando usted se iba a ir, usted fue a ver a Marta. Cuando ya nos íbamos, eh, ella se quedó acostada. When we were leaving, she stayed uh, laying in bed. Y le dije que la quería mucho y, y me dijo que okay, yo también che. I told her um, I loved her quite a lot, and she said yes, same thing. Me dijo que tiene me tiene un chingo de las tiene otro que usted dijo. Ella me decía che. She would call me che. Cerré la puerta de su cuarto del cuarto de mi mamá. So I closed my mom's uh, bedroom. No, the cuarto. Sí, el cuarto de mi mamá. I closed my, the door of my mom's uh, bedroom. Y caminé atrás de mi mamá. Eh, mi mamá iba caminando muy rápido. And I walked behind my mom. My mom was walking pretty fast. So when you saw her, she was in your mom's bedroom. Cuando usted la vio, ella estaba entonces en el cuarto de su mamá. Sí, arropada. Yes, uh, yes she was covered in, uh, covered out with blankets. She's what? Covered with blankets. Or under the blankets, their translation. May I approach? Mm -hmm. But the reflector like trying to witness what has been admitted to state six. Is this the room where she was when you saw her? Is it the room where she was when you saw her? Yes. Yes. And what was she doing? She was sleeping. She was sleeping. She was uh, laying down and she told me she was sleeping right here. Did Marta want to come with you to sell lottery tickets? Marta quería venir con ustedes para vender los tickets de lotería. No, dijo que quería quedarse durmiendo. No, she wanted. Uh, she said she wanted to stay sleeping. So who was first out the front door? ¿Quién salió primero por la puerta del frente? Mi mamá con Harold. My mom and Harold. Was Harold walking or was your mom carrying him? Harold estaba caminando o su mamá lo llevaba asado. No mm, recuerdo. I don't remember. Were you behind them? Estuvo detrás de ellos. Sí. Yes. So did you follow them out the door? Usted los siguió entonces a salir de la puerta. Sí. Yes. Did you close the door behind you? Usted cerró la puerta al salir. Sí. Yes. Did you lock the door? Usted le echó llave o seguro a la puerta. No tenía llave. Le puse el seguro de abajo a la puerta porque no tenía llave de la casa. I didn't have the key to the house, so I locked um, with the. Uh, with the, lock at the, with the lower uh, block because I didn't have the key to the house. Your um, state moves what is the marketing identification as 3Q and 3R in the No objection. Without objection. <coughs> 3Q and 3R marked by they become states 18 and 19. <laughs> Good job. Do you recognize what's in the states 18 and 19? Do you recognize what's in the states 18 and 19? Sí. Yes. What is it? ¿Qué son? El seguro de la puerta de la sala de frente. The uh, locks to the doors at the, the front, the front corner. De la sala, de la entrada. The room, the living room and the, and the main door. Now you say that you didn't have a key. Usted dijo que no tenía la llave. 
So how were you able to lock the door? No pudo usted pasarle seguro a la puerta. El de abajo se podía cerrar eh, sin llave. The bottom one could be locked without a key. Y lo jalé y ya. So I pulled it in and that was it. When you left, was the top lock No, it was open. So just the bottom lock? Just the bottom. Now, when you left your mother's apartment, um, did you drop Harold off? Harold? Mm -hmm. Carol. Carol. Sí, fuimos a dejar a Harold donde mi hermana Nicole. Yeah, I went ahead and dropped Harold off at my sister's uh, Nicole's. Okay. And then from there, where did you go? Y de ahí a donde siguió usted. Me fui con mi mamá a lo lancho a vender los números de lotería. ¿A dónde? A lo lancho. A lo lancho. So uh, I went with my mother to a lo lancho for the lottery. Um, how long were you at a lo lancho? ¿Cuánto tiempo estuvieron en a lo lancho? Eh... Hasta la una en minutos, y le dije a mi mamá que quería regresar al apartamento. Just a little past one, I told my mother I'd like to get back to the apartment. Why did you want to get back to the apartment? Porque quería regresar al apartamento. Porque sentía que algo no, no, no andaba bien. Because I just had a feeling that something wasn't going right. Did you leave earlier than you had planned? Se fue más temprano. De lo usual. No, eh, simplemente estuvo llamando mi mamá a mi hermana, no contestaba. Well, no, my uh, uh, mother was calling my sister and she wasn't answering. Y estaba esperando unas baleadas para, para, que, para llevarle de comer a mi hermana. ¿Una qué? Baleadas. I was waiting for some baleadas to give my, to get some food for my sister. Pero... Yo sentí que quería volver, que no sé, algo no andaba bien. But I just felt like I wanted to go back because I was feeling that something wasn't right. And did you go back? Y regresó. ¿O fue allá? Sí, yo hice que mi mamá volviera al apartamento conmigo. Yeah, I, I uh, pretty much convinced my mother forced her to come back to the apartment with me. When you got back to the apartment, who went into the apartment first? I'm sorry, Councilor. When you went to the apartment, who went into the apartment first? Cuando ustedes llegaron al apartamento, ¿quién entró al apartamento primero? Mi mamá. My mother. When you entered, did you look for your sister, Martha? Y cuando usted entró, trató de buscar a su hermana Marta. Sí. Yes. Tell us what you saw. Díganos qué fue lo que vio. Eh, iba caminando detrás de mi mamá. So I was walking behind my mother. Mire una mancha roja en la parte izquierda de la alfombra. I can see a, a red stain on the uh, left side of the uh, carpet. Esta, esta es la alfombra en esta parte de aquí izquierda. Mire la mancha grande roja. This is the apartment, and on this corner here, I could see the large red spot on the, the carpet. Y, ya, y llamé a mi hermana, Marta, Marta, y le dije, ya le echaste jugo de mora o de fresa a la alfombra. And so I uh, called out, uh, Marta, Marta, looks like you already got some uh, blueberry or blackberry juice and stained the, the carpet. No, mire que mi hermana salió, como siempre, que ella corría por el pasillo y salía cuando no llegaba. I didn't see my uh, sister come uh, running towards us. Usually when we would show up, she would come down the hallway and come meet us. Después fui, después miré a mi mamá que miró en shock hacia la sala. I then uh, saw my mother who was uh, looking towards the uh, living room in shock. Y fue cuando miré unos piecitos saliendo de la mesa pegada al, al sofá. Then I could see uh, some legs or feet uh, pointing out from the uh, table or the sofa. Mi mamá corrió y jaló la mesa. So my mother ran and she pulled on the table. 
y miré a mi hermana en el suelo, pero ella estaba recostada así. So I could see my uh, sister on the floor, but she was uh, bent over, folded like so. Not the right reflect the witness kind of um, put her head down and, and put her. Que queda sentado en el acta de que la testigo se acurrucó así como estaba la niña, la hermana. No, ella ella estaba entre acostada medio así o algo así, pero estaba mitad en que no se le miraba eh, la parte de al frente de la cara. Well, she was folded over in a, in a manner that you could not see one side of her face. Fue cuando mi mamá eh, la volteó. So that's when my mother went ahead and uh, turned her over. What did you see when she turned her over? I'm sorry, Pablo. What did you see when she you turned her over? Can we all cuando su mamá volteó a Marta? Mi hermana tenía el corpiño hacia arriba, okay. el top, ella usaba un top para dormir, un topcito de niña. So she had a little uh, top, a piece of clothing that she slept with. Lo tenía hacia arriba. And it was uh, lifted up like so. Tenía la lengüita un poco hacia afuera. Her uh, tongue was uh, sticking out uh, somewhat. El pelo lo tenía muy, muy pegajoso y los ojitos los tenía pegados. Ve. Eh, cerrados. Her hair was uh, sticky looking and her ¿qué era lo que tenía cerrado? Los ojos de y tenía so lágrimas en los ojos, pero los tenía cerrados. Her eyes were uh, pretty close shut and uh, she uh, looked like she'd been crying. Y tenía el cuchillo enterrado en la garganta. And so she had the knife stuck in her neck. Y tenía cortado el cuello. And uh, her throat had been cut. What did your mom do? Mama? Mi mamá se hincó, levantó el cuerpo de mi hermanita. So she went ahead and uh, grabbed my little sister's body and lifted up. Se sentó en el sofá. She sat down on the sofa. Se puso a mi hermana aquí. She put uh, my uh, sister's head uh, here. Empezó a darle besos. She began kissing her. Le, le sacó el cuchillo con mucha fuerza y lo lanzó. She pulled out the knife, uh, rather uh, had a hard time with it, but pulled it out hard and threw it away. Para ver si tal vez ella podía respirar. To determine if she was able to breathe. Y me gritó que llamara al 911 y empezó a darle besos y llorar mi mamá. She told me to go ahead and call 911 and uh, she uh, began uh, uh, kissing Marta and uh, Besándole y qué más? Abrazándole y besándole. Holding her and kissing her. Y diciéndole lo siento gorda y, y me dijo que llamara 911. And uh, telling uh, me uh, I'm sorry uh, uh, that we need, need to call 911. Um, the knife, did you recognize that knife? El cuchillo, ¿usted lo reconoció? Sí. Yes. Was it a knife from your mom's house? El cuchillo era de la casa de tu mamá. Sí. Yes. What kind of knife was it? ¿Qué tipo de cuchillo era? Era uno que Miguel utilizaba para cortar carne y pescado, que tenía dientes. It was a serrated knife uh, that was used for uh, fish and meat. Did you call the police? Llamó a la policía. Sí. Yes. Where were you when you called the police? ¿Dónde estaba usted cuando llamó a la policía? Estaba viendo, estaba entre afuera y viendo a mi mamá con mi hermana en el sofá. I was like a, uh, on the outside, but I was able to see my mother with my sister on the sofa. Porque la puerta estaba abierta. Because the door was half open. Entonces llamé al 911. So I called 911. Y comencé a, a sentir el... el, el porque yo soy mamá. So I began uh, feeling the effect uh, because I'm a mother too. Y la imagen de mi mamá, de una madre llorando con el cuerpo de su hija es muy triste. The image of uh, seeing a mother with her child in her arms like that is uh, very saddening. Más ella que no paraba de besarle y abrazarla y, y gritaba llorando. And more so, more so her because uh, she wouldn't uh, stop uh, trying to hold her and kiss her. Que la amaba mucho, que la quería mucho y 
telling her that she loved her very, very much. Entonces, eh, me quebranté y comencé a llorar. So then I broke down and uh, began crying myself. Now, hmm. when you called 911, um, did you come into my office before today and, and listen to that 911 call? Cuando usted llamó al 911 y vino usted hoy a mi oficina anteriormente y escuchó la llamada. Sí. Yes. Your Honor, I asked that 6K for identification be admitted. Se sucedió que pido que la 6K sea recibida. No hay objeción de la defensa. Yes, Your Honor. Queda admitido. Ladies and gentlemen, when the lawyers agree that certain facts are true, that's called the stipulation of facts, you must accept stipulated facts as having been proven. However, the significance of these facts, as with all facts, is related to the state. In this case, the parties have agreed to enter into a stipulation regarding 911 calls that were made in conjunction with this case. The calls were made by someone who was speaking in Spanish. The parties agree that the two recordings of the 911 calls in this case are true and exact copies of the actual 911 calls and that these calls are recorded as part of the regular course of the City of Miami Police and Fire Rescue Departments. The persons who can be heard speaking in these calls are caller Stephanie Rivera, a dispatcher for the City of Miami Police Department, and a dispatcher for the City of Miami Fire Rescue Department. The parties agree that the two recordings of the 911 calls made in this case were submitted to an official court translator to be translated from Spanish to English so that a transcript of the calls would be available. The parties agree that the person who translated each of the 911 calls in this case was qualified to translate from Spanish to English, that the person who completed the translation does not work for the state of Florida nor for the defense and that the translation is accurate. Your Honor, based on the stipulation, the statement was in March for identification of 6L into evidence. All right. Thank you, Your Honor. 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 Thank
the flow of the river. Thank <laughs> you. 
La policía llegó bastante rápido. Sí. Sí. Yes. What do you remember about when they got there? I'm sorry, Cass. What do you remember about when they got there? ¿Qué logra recordar usted de cuando llegó la policía? Eh, un oficial me, to me, me tocó el hombro. An officer touched my shoulder. I'm sorry, you both need to speak a little bit louder. An officer touched my so shoulder. Y me dijo que dónde estaba. Y yo le, ¿dónde estaba mi hermana? And so uh, he, he asked me, where was my sister? Y él subió corriendo y yo caminé hacia adelante llorando. Y so he ran upstairs and I uh, walked forward crying. Mi mamá estaba dentro con mi hermana cuando el oficial llegó. My uh, mother was uh, with my sister when the officer appeared. Did they take your sister away? Se llevaron a tu hermanita. Sí. Yes. Did the police ask you to stay? Los agentes de la policía le pidieron a usted que se quedara. No, eh, yo estaba afuera y a mi mamá la sacaron. No, I was uh, outside and uh, my mother was uh, brought out. You were all brought out of the apartment? Estaban todos ya fuera del apartamento. Sí, después de sacar a mi hermana eh, de pies y manos. Yeah, after they had uh, brought out my sister uh, holding her legs and hands. And she was taken by fire rescue? Yeah, había sido los de rescue. No recuerdo. I don't recall. Your Honor, um, I asked for two so, E and two F for identification to be admitted. Dos E for identification for the expediente, no hay objeción de la defensa. Two E and two F marked for identity can state 22 and 23. Dos E y dos F pasan a ser 22 y 23. Si me puedo acercar, sí, sí puede. The record reflect I'm showing the witness that has previously been marked as identification as states 23. I'm admitted as states 23. Who is in this picture? ¿Quién está en esa foto? Soy yo. That's me. Is this you on the day? ¿Es usted en esa fecha? Sí. Yes. Now I'm showing you what has been admitted as states 22. Who's in this photo? My mama. My mother. Is this also on the day of Marta's death? También en la fecha de la muerte de Marta. Sí. Yes. And were both of these photos taken <coughs> after you discovered her body? Y ambas fotos fueron tomadas después de que había sido descubierto el cuerpo. Sí. Yes.
While you were waiting to talk to the police, mientras esperaba para hablar con la policía, did the defendant show up to the area? Llegó a aparecer el acusado al sitio. Sí. Yes. And at some point, did the police take you back to the police station? I'm sorry. Huh? At some point, did the police take you back to the police station? En algún momento dado, la policía lo llevó a él a la estación de policía. El día, sí, el día que pasó el suceso, sí. Yeah, the, también a la estación de policía. On the day of the incident, he was also taken to the police. Okay. You were taken to the police. Objection, non-response, a move to strike. Strike, disregard, the last comment, non-responsive. Error, o sea, Just que no responde debidamente, pero por favor escuche la pregunta. Fue el error del intérprete. Yeah. Did you go and speak to the police? Fue usted a la estación de policía para hablar con los agentes de la policía. See. Yes, interpreter stands corrected, Your Honor. The interpreter is the one who made the mistake. Was there a point when the police showed you a surveillance video? I'm sorry, counsel. Was there a point when the police showed you a surveillance video? Que si hubo un momento dado en que la policía le mostró un video de vigilancia. Sí. Yes. Subject to what's being linked up, the defense has an objection. All right, subject to being linked to the objection. 6J marked by DVD stage 24. La 6J pasa a ser la número 24. Okay, so that's what we're talking about. Okay, so that's what we're talking about. He said the police showed you a surveillance video. Usted dijo de que los agentes de la policía le mostraron un video de la vigilancia. Sí. Yes. Okay. Um, and did you come and review that surveillance video with me prior to today's testimony? Y usted hoy día vino acá conmigo y repasó y vio ese video nuevamente. Sí. Yes. I'm showing the witness, the judge, if I may approach. I'm sure. showing the witness that has been admitted as stage 24. Um, this is the video you reviewed? ¿Es este el video que usted repasó y vio? Sí. Yes. And this is the surveillance video the police showed you. Y ese es el video de la vigilancia que le mostraron los agentes de la policía. Sí. Yes. You have permission to publish? Yes. Permiso para publicarlo. Concedido. I'm not sure if the jurors see this screen. Que si se busca. Thank you. Y su señoría para que la testigo pueda acomodarse de esta forma de poder verla. Si ver el video. Si lo logra ver o si quiere se para y se pone aquí. Puede ver. I can see it from here. Alright, and make sure to keep your voice up again. Thank you. Y así por favor en voz alta cuando esté contestando la pregunta. Thank you. 
Sí, disculpe, sí, señoría. For the record, I'm playing the fifth clip. Okay, that's going to come in like that. That's the sixth. Now, the fourth. Yeah, I'm just. Uh, Ms. Rivera, what are we looking at here? Where is your front door? If you could just point to it. Where is your front door? Right there. Okay. Um, right here? Right here. By these trees. Yeah. I see some stairs here. Are the stairs, you guys were on the first floor or the second floor? ¿Ustedes estaban en el piso de abajo o en el piso, el segundo piso? En el primer piso y esas son las escaleras que van al segundo piso. We were on the uh, first floor and those, the uh, stairway goes to the second floor. Y otro apartamento. A separate apartment. Okay. I'm going to now go forward. Voy a adelantar el video ahora. So where the video says 10, 27, 50. 27 minutes and 50 seconds. I should say 10, 27, 45 a.m. 10, 27, 45 a.m. Do you see someone approach? Will there be a young Yes. Okay. Um, Ms. Rivera, I want to ask you to our apartment, to my mother's apartment. Do you know who that person is? ¿Sabe usted quién era esa persona? Sí. Yes. Who is it? ¿Quién es? Miguel. Miguel. Now going to play. Voy a pasar ahora a six. Six six. Starting. Seven. Just before eleven un poquito antes de las 11 de la mañana <coughs> Do you see a man leaving? Sí. Well, yes. And who is that person leaving? Miguel. 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 Miguel, ¿se refiere a esta persona sentado acá? Sí. Yes. ¿Ese es el mismo video que le mostró la policía? Sí. 
Yes? Stephanie, I know on that video, you can't really see his face. Yo entiendo, o sea, que en el video usted no logra o nadie logra verle la cara, correcto? How do you know it's him? I'm sorry. How do you know it's him? ¿Cómo sabe usted que es él? Porque lo conozco como camina y sé cómo es el tamaño de él. Because I know how he walks, I know his height. Lo conozco muy bien. I know him well. No más preguntas. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take our lunch break at this time. This is my stuff. All right, I'm going to have to leave the notepads on your seats. Okay, so, and then we can walk over to this one. Please leave your notepads on your seats. Um, please do not discuss this case with each other or with anyone else. Please look at the investigation or research to try to gather information. That is not evidence. In addition, um, you may see some of us outside of the courtroom. This is to everyone in the courtroom, not just the parties or my staff, or the spectators. No contact or communication with anyone wearing a jewelry badge. Wear your badge well displayed so that everyone can see it, even if you don't recognize the juror. They have a juror, and they have a juror badge, please stay away from them and be very cautious about communicating about this case. Make sure no one is around you who is wearing a juror badge. Uh, I'm going to ask you please to return after lunch. We'll have you back at 135. Renee will let you know where to meet him after lunch. Please do not come to the courtroom. Once everyone is back from lunch and we're ready to go, we will bring you into the uh, There was one other thing. One of the jurors had asked if we were permitted to ask questions. And the answer to that is no. All right. Very well. Thank you so much. All right. No puedo hablar acerca de tu testimonio con nadie. Okay. 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 I'm going to ask you to be back again also at 1.35. We'll have you to stand and then this afternoon we'll, you will go through the cross-examination. Pasará la parte del contrainterrogatorio por parte de la defensa. ¿Está bien? Okay. Very good. Muy bien. Thank you. You're Gracias. Puede quedar incluso.
Swear from a testimony about to give will be the truth, whole truth, nothing but the truth, sir. Yes, I do. You can be seated.
belts or those chairs are not designed for people carrying gun belts. Um, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, could you please introduce yourself to the members of our jury? Yes. Good afternoon. My name is uh, Victor Palacios. Oh. Okay. Sorry. The room has very high ceilings and voices yes. don't oh, yes, about that. Good afternoon. My name is uh, Officer Victor Palacios. Where do you currently work? I'm a police officer with the City of Miami Beach right now. How long have you been with the City of Miami Beach? Seven years. Can you tell the jurors what is your responsibilities within the City of Miami Beach Police Department? Yes, I'm a uniform uh, patrol officer. So what I do is uh, I answer 911 calls, handle accidents, um, but, you know, things of that nature. Just, just uh, the patrol level. Okay. Prior to starting employment at the Miami Beach Police Department, did you work at another police agency? Yes, I did. And what police department was that? The City of Miami. How long were you a City of Miami police officer? <laughs> 25 years. Did you retire? Yes. And now you're back doing more law enforcement. I enjoy serving. Okay. Um, would you explain to the members of the jury what kinds of roles did you play from the time you were a rookie at the City of Miami Police Department up until the time you retired? What, what kinds of assignments did you have? Yes, um, I started uh, like now as a patrol officer. From there, um, I went to the K-9 unit. Uh, well, in the K-9 unit, I became the trainer of the K-9 unit. Um, from there, I, I also was deputized with the FBI working a task force. Um, then I went to the crime suppression unit where you work uh, on the cover, on the cover narcotics uh, jobs. And then from there, I got promoted to a sergeant. And when you get promoted to being a sergeant, what's the next step in your career? What do you do? <laughs> well, I mean, you, you can still go up to lieutenant, um, et cetera, but uh, I stayed uh, as a patrol sergeant, so first level supervision. When you are a sergeant, are you responsible to oversee a squad of, of uh, police officers? Yes, ma'am. Um, how long did you stay in that capacity? Uh, seven or eight years as a sergeant. And in what position were you when you ultimately retired from the city of Miami? A police sergeant. I want to take you back almost nine years ago to the date of June 22nd, 2014. Were you a patrol sergeant over the Little Havana District of the City of Miami Police Department? Yes, I was. Can you describe for the members of the jury geographically what part of Miami is that? <sighs> it's, uh, let me see if I remember back from, uh, it's west of the Miami River, um, from Southwest A Street to the 836, all the way down to uh, 27th Avenue. I would like to ask if on Sunday, June 22nd, 2014, you were working that afternoon as yes. a patrol sergeant? Yes, ma'am. Did you respond to a call that was located at 834 Northwest 4th Street in Miami? Yes, I did. And is that in Miami-Dade County, Florida? Yes. Do I have permission to approach if I'm asking each time? Sure. Okay, thank you. Um, Officer Plasius, I'm showing you state's exhibit number two, which is in evidence. Do you recognize this photograph? Yes. And in fact, the, the building here with the red roof, is that the building 834 Northwest 4th Street? Yes. Did you respond there based on information you heard on the police radio? Yes. When you responded there, um, well, let me ask you this. When you heard the call go out over police radio, were you near that location? Yes, fairly, fairly close to that location. And when you got to that location, were any other police officers there yet? No, I was the first one. <laughs> I'm showing you states four and also two H for identification. Do these depict the exterior of the building that you responded to? Yes. I move states 2H for identification and evidence. Can I see 2H? 
No objection. Without objection. 2H Mark Friday becomes states 25. <laughs> particular afternoon, were you alone in your police car? No. Who else was in your police car with you? A police explorer. Not just any police explorer. No, ma'am, it was my son. Can you explain to the jurors, what is the police explorer program? The police explorer program is a subdivision of the Boy Scouts of America. Uh, usually we get uh, teens, youth, um, between 12, 18 years old, that are interested in a future in, in law enforcement. So we teach them police procedures. They get to ride with us in the police cars. They also get community service hours that I can use uh, later for, you know, like college, <clears throat> anything like that. Um, how old was your son at that point? <sighs> 16 years old. Now, if you can please walk the jurors okay. through. You okay. arrive. In your patrol car, your son is there too. Please tell the jurors, what do you do when you get to that building? Um, <clears throat> obviously, uh, I get out of the police car. I immediately respond to um, to the apartment. Now I see that the door is it's open. I make entry to the apartment. What do you see when you first look through the door of the apartment? Um, <clears throat> as, as soon as I go in to my right, I see um, a woman pregnant, pre um, a young child in her arms like this. Um, she was screaming, crying. I don't know exactly what she was saying. Next to her, there was a younger uh, female. Um, Go ahead. So I, I noticed that the child that she was ho holding was unconscious, was limp on, on her arms. What did you do when you see this child in this state? Immediately, um, I took her away uh, from this other lady, and I placed her on the floor of the apartment to start assessing her condition. I'm showing you what's in evidence as states uh, 22 and 11. First, as to number 22, is this the woman who was holding that child? Yes. And as to states number 11, is this the living room that you saw her holding that child in? Yes, ma'am.
when you take this child and you put her down, are you able to see if she has any injuries on her body? Um, yes. Can you describe what you saw? Immediately I saw that her left wrist had a, a laceration so deep that it, it to me it looked like almost like like her hand was almost severed. She had blood on her. Did she have any other injuries that you noticed? Um, yes. Where? On her neck. What kind of an injury? Well, at first I only saw the blood because I was assessing for her breathing pulse. Um, did you have to touch her neck to check for a pulse? Yes. Um, I, so what I did is uh, once I placed her on the floor, I checked for a pulse. Um, and I was also looking at her chest sideways like this to see if the chest was rising to ensure if the person was breathing or not. So I couldn't find a pulse. And I, she was not breathing, the chest wasn't rising. Do you try to do what's known as chest compressions? Yes. What is that? Well, um, your basic um, CPR class, um, you start you know, doing the compressions uh, on the chest to see if you can get the, the heart pumping the blood uh, on the body and then you move on to doing the, the rescue uh, breathing. Now, in order to do the, the breathing part of CPR, did you ask your son to retrieve something for you? Yes. Uh, once I determined that she wasn't breathing and she, doesn't, she didn't have a pulse, I just looked at my son, he was right behind me, and I told him, go to the police car, get me the, the CPR mask. So he went, and I just continued. I had, you know, tunnel vision doing, you know, trying to concentrate what I, what I was doing. Doing the chest compressions, and I don't know, within seconds, he came back with the CPR mask. Um, I apologize. Okay. Can you describe for the jurors what does a CPR mask look like? I'm sorry. Are you need some water? Please. Okay. Uh, and I apologize for interrupting. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm sorry about that. what it is that you do with a CPR mask? The CPR mask that I had is a, it's a full face, meaning it's a, the one that, that goes around the nose and the mouth. And it has, the, the hole where you blow through, it has a one-way valve so that you can blow into it. But if there's anything coming back, uh, like some fluids or anything like that, that valve blocks the, anything from coming into, into your mouth. For the record, I'm showing counsel what are marked as states 2D, 3C, and 3D. No objection, Your Honor. States 2D, 3C, and 3D mark for ID becomes states 26 through 28.
the CPR mask that you were describing for us? To the right is a mask, and to the left is a container where, where you keep the mask. Can you describe for the jurors, where is it that you were trying to perform CPR on this child's body? Where? Where I placed them out. Oh, no, 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 I'm sorry. Where physically are you in this apartment? Oh. Well, she's, like on the picture you show, she's on the floor. So I went on her, on her right side. I was on my knees uh, doing the chest compressions and, and trying to, uh, you know, about to start doing the rescue breathing. I'm going to show you exhibits 27 and 26, which are in evidence. These depict the living room that you were in that you were trying to close the yard. Yes, ma'am. And I noticed a uh, yellow item. Is that the uh, coat for the mask? That's a case for the mask, yes, ma'am. And could you show us, using state's exhibit number uh, 26 here, kind of where was the child's head and feet and where are you? Sorry, this is... Uh, it's okay. It's hard to... It's hard to show you. Um, the, head, <clears throat> the head was on this side towards the TV. The feet are out this way, and I was on the side of uh, where the yellow case is. So it will be the child was obviously facing up, and so I was on her right side. Did you have any difficulty getting air into this child's lungs? Yes. What was happening? Um, when I when I gave her the the first breath, I heard the air, and I you know I, I heard and saw the air that I was putting in, coming out through her neck on the side. How was it that the air was coming out of her neck? She had a hole here from a cut. She had a laceration. In order to try to get the air to stay and go into her lungs, what did you have to do? Well, I, I improvised. I'm sorry. Okay. Somebody's I'm sorry. Um, I had to improvise something that I don't teach you in the CPR class. So I put my um, my hand on her neck and I tried to close my my fingers as, as tight as I, I could to try to form a seal on her neck so that I could uh, breathe into the mask to be able to, um, you know, get her chest to rise. Did it work? Um, somewhat because, I'm sorry, give me a second. Sorry, this is um so 
I, I formed a seal around her neck. I tried the best that, that, that I could with my hand. But when I gave her the breath, I could feel the air bubbles with, with, uh, with blood zip, uh, zipping through my fingers. So I, I couldn't pull the, the seal super tight. But I had to just continue with what I had there. Were you wearing gloves? No. Didn't have time to put gloves on. I imagine you must have gotten a fair amount of her blood on your hands. I had a lot of blood on me, on my uniform, my hands, my at fingers. Some, at some point, as you're trying to save this child's life, does fire rescue arrive? Yes. Can you tell the jurors what happens when fire rescue gets there? I'm so desperate. As soon as I, I'm continuing the CPR, and I just feel, you know, when I look, I see, you know, the, the firemen standing above me to, uh, on this side, towards her feet. And I just looked at him, and the first thing that came out of my, uh, my you know, that, that I could say was, the air is coming out through her neck. So, he just grabbed her. They didn't do anything that he grabbed her and went out running from the apartment. Once fire rescue had taken, well, let me ask you this. At any point, as you're trying to perform CPR on her, do you get the sense that she's got a pulse? No. At any point, do you sense that she's breathing? No, ma'am. When fire rescue takes this little girl away, do you then think about conducting what's known as a safety check? Yes. What is a safety check? Okay, you, you gotta switch back to, to your duty as a police officer. A safety check is, you have to ensure by checking the, the rest of the, the apartment in this case, that there's no other victims or there's any offenders hiding in, in the apartment. Before doing this safety check, do you do anything about your hands? Yes. I had so much blood in my hands, and at that time, there was another officer, and for the life of me, I cannot remember who he was, his name. It's a male officer. I comes into the apartment, so when you do this safety check, because you're looking for victims or maybe for another offender, you do it with your uh, handgun, you know, with your weapon drawn. So, but I, I had so much blood in my hands that, uh, I was afraid that when I grabbed my gun that it was going to slip out of my hands because of the blood. So right in front of me there was a kitchen. So I tell the, the other officer, I say, watch my back. So I go to the, you know, I'm looking because that way, um, down that way to my left was the, the rooms. So I go to the kitchen sink and I, you know, wash the blood out of my hands. Um, enough to um, to be able to holster my gun and, and safely hold my gun, and then you know I tell the officer, okay, let's go, and, and we do a systematic check, a, a tactical check of the apartment, room by room. When you're washing your hands, are you like after the fact, like wiping up the sink to make sure that it looks nice and clean? No, ma'am, not at all. I was trying to brush. Showing council states, oh, it's in evidence, states the, number eight. Uh, here, do you see this picture? This is the kitchen that you went into? Yes, ma'am. And where I'm pointing here with my fingers, is that the sink you Did you locate any other victims inside the apartment during that safety check? No, ma'am. Any other 
potential any potential offenders in that safety check. No, ma'am. <clears throat> As a sergeant of the patrol bureau, did you have administrative and supervisory responsibilities to manage once the child had been taken away and you had cleared the apartment of any offenders or victims? Yes, I had to switch back to uh, the supervisor mode. So you get out of the apartment and you get your officers, you assign them to do a perimeter, secure the scene, identify witnesses, um, make calls for, uh, you know, uh, we do the, what is called the notifications, um, where they call the we go homicide, uh, crime scene, and they continue doing the, the, the notifications from the bridge. The bridge is uh, where the 911 call center is, and the bridge is where the supervisor for the dispatcher uh, uh, is sitting. So they're in charge of doing that. Did there come a time when the scene was actually, um, as they say, roped off with crime scene tape? Yes. As the police and fire rescue respond to this scene, does there come a time when a lot of, I guess, bystanders start to come and congregate to see what's going on? Yes, ma'am. That's why we put up the, the crime scene tape. And so you have states 29 in evidence. Does that depict the area that was roped off with crime scene tape? Yes, ma'am. I think some investigators as well. Yes. What do you do if you encounter somebody that you think might have information relevant to the case? You hold them so that they can get interviewed by the, by the detectives. And in this case, did homicide detectives actually respond to the scene? Oh, yes, ma'am. Did you talk with them and tell them about what you had seen and heard when you got there? Yes, uh, once the scene was secured, you know, eventually they, get, they got there. So as a supervisor, I approached them and uh, I debriefed them on what I had what I, and what I saw. After you had debriefed them and told them what you had seen, did you stay on the scene? No, not for long. Where did you go? I, I asked permission to my supervisor, the lieutenant, to go home. You didn't want to stay there? It was... I've been doing this for a long time. That was very horrific. Um, Sergeant, I want to, well, now officer, I want to ask you a question. At that time, did you have any knowledge of whether or not there was video cameras that may have captured anything that happened around that apartment? No, ma'am. I didn't check. Did you subsequently learn that, in point of fact, there was a video camera that was aimed in the general direction of where the entry to that apartment was that you responded to? Yes, ma'am. And did you have an opportunity to see some of that video footage? Yes. And in viewing that video footage, were you able to actually see when your patrol car pulls up? Uh, yes, ma'am. And yourself and your son running to the apartment and then your son running back? Yes, ma'am. Joint Council State 6P for identification.
Judge, subject to linking up the statement of 6P for identification and evidence. No objection, subject to linkage. Subject being linked. No, no objection. 6P marked by DB from the state's 30. I'm going to show you a DVD that appears to have some initials on it. Do you know whose initials those are? Those are my initials. VP and, for Victor Palacios. And you initialed this um, CD so that you would be able here in court to know this is one that you've seen before? Yes, ma'am. And is this, in fact, a depiction of the video footage from that camera that was aimed at the entrance of the apartment? Yes, ma'am. Motion to publish? Just for the benefit of the people that are further away, at this point we're starting to see more bystanders come and crowd around where the apartment is. Slow this down a little bit. 
emergency lights flashing. Yes. Is there come a time when you start to see somebody running up to the apartment? In 
The psalm is what from the testimony about to give be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. I do, Your Honor. Thank you. My ears are City of Miami Police Department. How long have you worked for the City of Miami Police Department? 15 years and a half. Where are you assigned? I am assigned to patrol to answer calls for service. How long have you worked as a patrol officer? 15 years and a half. So the whole time you've been with the City of Miami, Miami Police Department? That's correct. Are you also a field training officer? Yes, I am. What is a field training officer? I train uh, new police officers to answer the all the 911 calls that we received. How long have you been a field training officer? I've been in uh, Janelle 10 and a half years. I'm going to take you back to June 22nd of 2014. Do you remember that day? I'll never forget that day. You were working patrol back then? Yes, I was. Were you a field training officer back then? Yes, I was. Now, back in 2014, did the city of Miami have body worn cameras? Back then, no. Is that something, I, I see you have yours on you right now. Yes, I do. Okay, is that something you use now? Yes, we do now. Okay, but back then you did not? I did not. Were you on duty at around 3 p.m. that afternoon? Yes, I was. Did you have a trainee with you? Yes, I was. Who was your trainee? It was Officer Shadwell. Officer Chadwell, you said? That's correct. And were you called to a scene located at 834 Northwest 4th Street? Yes, I was. Do you remember, was it a house or an apartment? It was an apartment one. Do you remember which apartment number? It was number one. Number one? Yes. Was it on, you, what floor of the apartment building? That was on the first floor. floor. Okay. And this was in the city of Miami? That is correct. Do you remember where you were when you received that call? I remember exactly where I was. I was having lunch at 2nd Avenue, Southwest 8th Street. Okay. And was your trainee with you? Yes, she was. So once you get the call, what did you do? I rushed in emergency mode to the above location. Um, how long did it take for you to get to that location? I would say nine and four, and I was on two and eight. I would say three or four minutes in emergency mode with lights on side. And when you arrived, you said you wrote it was an apartment building. That's correct. Describe it for us. It's a two-floor apartment building. Uh, I've never returned there again. But I remember it was a two-floor apartment building, and the apartment was the first floor. If I may approach? Yes, you may. Let the record reflect I'm showing the witness what has been admitted in States Exhibit 4. Officer, is this the apartment building for you? Yes. We'll call that to you? Yes. Was there any other law enforcement on the scene when you arrived? Yes. It was um, Sergeant Palacio. Okay. When you got there, did you go into the apartment? Yes. I rushed to the apartment. Tell us what you remember seeing when you entered that apartment. I remember seeing a little girl. I would say that she was 9, 10, and she ended up being 11 years old. She was. Uh, she was laying in the living room when you go into the door. She was uh, bleeding fusively. Mm -hmm. 
and I observed uh, Sergeant Palacios kneeling. Apparently he was taking a pulse at that time. I, I wouldn't recall that time. Do you remember where she was bleeding from? Her part of her body? Yes. Where was she bleeding from? From the head, the neck. From the neck? Yes. When you saw this, what was your first inclination? The first inclination, I guess any human being will be to save someone's life. And my inclination was to proceed CPR. Okay. Did you provide CPR? At the time when I was going to start CPR, then we observed the neck. He was, he was cut from, completely from side to side. Did she have a pulse? Did fire rescue arrive? Yes. Okay. How long after you got there did fire rescue arrive? Fire rescue arrived immediately. What did you observe fire rescue do? They were working on the body. Okay. Did they take her? Yes. We transported the body to trial. Okay. Um, while fire rescue was taking her, did you encounter any of the victim's family members? The mother. The mother? Yes. And where was this that you encountered her? She was outside the room. What was her demeanor like? She was hysterical. Like any any mother will be. It was a normal reaction. Now, when the victim was transported by fire rescue, did you go with the victim? Yes. Okay. When I ask if you went to go with the victim, do you actually go in the ambulance? No. I went with my vehicle. In your in your police vehicle? Correct. Do you use lights and sirens? Correct. I wanted to get there faster. Um, and do you follow them, or, or how does it work? They follow us so we can lead and open the traffic so they can arrive sooner. So once you're at the hospital, what do you remember? I remember all the trauma. Doctors and nurses attempting to do every possible thing to break. Um, at some point, did the doctors, were you notified that she was deceased? Yes. Now, after you were told this, did you remain at the hospital? Yes, I did. How long did you remain? I remember till I went home. I know you respond to a lot of calls. Yes, um, I do. Have you responded to homicides before? Yes. How do you have such a good memory of this one? <coughs> this one was an 11 year old. Somebody innocent. I did not deserve this. One moment.
Your Honor, um, at this point, the statement of 6E for identification is evidence. Uh, this is a uh, subject of pretrial hearing. I object. Over objection. Six E mark by D becomes states thirty one. Now, Officer Lastro, yes. um, I'm going to show you what has now been admitted as state. Back over there, but do it in your camera. Wednesday? I know you said a half a day. What 